I've got some uh, paint kind of flashing off next door. So while I have a couple of minutes, I thought we would take this uh, carburetor apart and see what we're up against. This was uh, just not set up very well. Accelerator pump uh, not working at all. Uh, anyway, the usual bullshit. Uh, it looks like it has at some point had a manual choke fitted. Oh no, that's that's part of the linkage for the automatic. Anyway, I'd like to get all that dialed in nice. Uh, so let's start by just tearing into it here. Uh, yeah, well I think you guys have watched people take screws out of carburetors enough. We'll just skip ahead here. Okay, screws out. Let's just see. I don't know how we're gonna film this. Oh, maybe it'll just actually come off with one hand then. Don't want to wreck the gasket if I don't have to. And it's intact. Mm hmm. That is good news. That is in absolutely perfect condition. So often when these get rebuilt, one of these will squeeze in or out, and then you got leaks and whatnot. Uh, so that, and as much as we've checked it there, that looks fine. What's going on in here? This is the, the dirty end of her here. Well, let's just uh, start peeling these bits out of here. Apologies for the one-handed shitty camera work to match the shitty one-handed disassembly here. Holy. So much easier with two hands. I can see why guys get those little camera stand things. That all looks fine. Everything's straight, not seized. Nothing to worry about there. And the jets look reasonable. And there's a, here's our problem child. This seems a little loose actually. Can you see that should should drag a little more on the it's also quite sticky so that's just likely just dirty so that's exciting this isn't all ripped up or seized up or rotten then the bore is essentially decent then it'll come around sort it out good I can go in there there's a check ball on the bottom of the accelerator pump, but it looks to be a captive setup, so I'm not here to uh, to try and change that. I thought there would be one in here as well. There is a second check ball in the system somewhere. I will have to figure it out. Uh, the accelerator pump system on these is actually uh, a major and a very common fail. And really, one of the only really uh, fail-prone parts on them. They're they're pretty bomb-proof. These things. So okay, I'm gonna put this down so I can use two hands, and we'll take a few more bits out. The needle valve is out, and it's fine. And that wasn't a problem that this engine was having. The floats uh, had, had sat around at some point, but they were not glued down. They're not. Oop. They don't make any noise, there's nothing in them. Those are fine, those are clean and reinstall. A little grudgy in the float bowl, but not terrible. Actually, really not terrible at all. Let's just see. Is that like a sandbox or is that just a little. No, by the standards of these things, that's not bad. So that we will clean up and it will be fine. Well hello Frankers. Is it more carburetor time? That's right. I had finished disassembling this. Um, just quickly removed the old gasket and blocked the bottom. Just to make sure there's no distortion and it looks to be in fine condition. These, uh, any leaks here, uh, instant fail. So. No problem, pretty straight ahead. 
This carburetor is reasonably decent enough that I'm not even going to dunk it. Uh, it doesn't look like any of the passages are blocked, but we're going to find that out pretty quick. If they're not, it's dunking it's only for cosmetic reasons. And since I don't really care about the cosmetics of this particular two-barrel carter, here's some bits and pieces that will all have to get cleaned. The mixture screws were dialed out further than I would expect. The idle speed screws were all over the place. Uh, you know, but it doesn't look like this has been apart a, a bunch of times, so uh, it looks like just a case of, uh, you know, misapplied energy or whatever. Let's uh, have a look at this accelerator pump, kind of the, uh, there we go, can we see that? Can we get that in there? Great. Um, these have a leather seal and you can see again I'm assuming we can see it looks like gasoline has dried up and glued it to the side this was all not moving when I got the car this was all covered in dried fuel I've scraped that away so I've had pretty good success with these by getting in here behind the spring and just kind of running around with a nice, uh, right, you can see the leather is pretty tough. So I'm just going to kind of gently come around it here. Let's try oiling that and see what happens. So gently, very gently, trying to restore some movement to this rubber seal or sorry leather seal um, starting to free up a bit now this is really the cause of a lot of the running problems with these types of cars carburetors without accelerator pumps kind of regulate their own mixture if they're set up properly but <clears throat> cars like this where you can hammer the throttles wide open instantly lean out and usually stall if they're idling when you and you could hear in the cold start video when I was trying to kick the car down that the uh, the engine would just cut out when you hit the throttle rather than rather than momentarily rev so pretty classic accelerator pump stuff never really looked at the car until very recently so didn't really think much of it but uh, okay good way to check is this should fit snugly and move freely but not fall down under its own weight like it was before that is actually quite good you can see that seems to be fitting very nicely. So I will carry on with that and then we will put some uh, some kind of fluid in here and just test the system. There's two check balls and a bunch of very long very finely drilled holes that we have to make sure are clear. So Anyway that's really that was the biggest problem with this. A lot of the other problems could have been sorted by just setting the adjustments from the outside. Presumably the ignition is just as poorly set up, so that's all going to come out as well. Maybe that's the doggy door. You want me to leave that? Hey, that's uh, that's not really appropriate. Hey, Frankers, can you get out of there please? Hey, come here. Yes, I get it. It's rusty. So, we're just going to test just holding this by hand and uh, oh yeah lots of lots of squirt now right mission accomplished yeah that'll start that'll run well now wow that's oh, crazy yeah. that's really awesome. lots Perfect. of action there yep great okay now we've made a mess right on back together it goes that, uh, uh, we're on to the 
brake lines. These are the front brake lines. I don't know. They're they've been look, they've been played with and bent and pushed back so many times. I'm just having a look at the passenger side front brake line. Um, some pretty severe damage there. And yeah, there it is. Uh, actually, well, I, th I thought that was rubbing, but it may turn out that that was also uh, damage from one thing or another. But it's, it's in poor and unsafe condition. And the end was uh, seized and stripped and all this kind of stuff. I just hate that. Hey, okay? like, right? All the vice grip marks, that's not happening. So this stuff, right, you buy them, they're super cheap. And they're, you know, you get the thing. Buy by the roll, it's cheap, make them all nice and new. Uh, yeah, the only trick is that it has to actually kind of match and fit. So, um, okay, I just dusted this up. We have not actually tried to put this in yet. So, I'm gonna try to get it at least kind of in the neighborhood. Yeah, and then we'll we'll see what's happening after that. But uh, yeah, these can be a bit of fun. I'm gonna <coughs> I think we'll just turn the camera off for the, the demonetizing portion of the show here. Hmm, well, the lighting's no screaming hell, but uh, that actually just dropped right in there. It looks really good. Nothing to worry about there. And, um, it's gonna fit up just fine when we get the new hoses. And then we're gonna tidy these up a bit just to make them look really nice and clean. And that uh, actually worked out very nicely. They look fine. There's a clip that goes there that I'm missing, so that'll hold this a little nicer. And uh, I just need to find that clip. Pretty sure I can find one. Okay, uh, the other side is in, or the driver's side. These are just thrown in for now, because we're gonna replace all the hoses and everything as well. So that, uh, that worked out nice. Fits fine, okay, all this other shit's gotta come off now. Let's get these brakes apart. So where did we leave off before we had to make the brake lines? Uh, taking the cylinders out. Let's take the cylinders out. What do you guys think of our Fury set, eh? Man, this place is just so uptown. I'm actually pretty excited that the car we're putting together here is the same combo as the centerfold car from the Fury brochure, so that's really cool. I have never seen another blue and white hardtop. So there's some nice combos. There's a, a red and silver. Looks like a all red or red and yeah, all red on that. That's nice. Um, you know, but I if I could have anything, it's the blue. Tom McHale, he's a fury man. Uncle Tom's like. Man, this thing is wicked. All right, let's put it back together. Yeah, we're doing a little post uh, post crash analysis. Fatigue analysis. Look at the fatigue factor on this baby. Oops. Here you can see where the pilot tried to engage just about anything at all, and essentially from here he was fucked. And yeah. The SV official report. Yeah, and it had, the official report was he was pretty. That that was he was fucked as soon as he as soon as he drove around with that in his car. A lot of it, you know, a lot of it's all right. The one with the spring on it is actually really good. 
So, since we have all the new, we're going to make it all new, because I hate that old, hey, old brakes. This hose is pretty good. We're putting it back in. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to spin the distributor up. And then we're going to play, what are we playing? Dwell Bingo? No, what was it called? The Dwell is Right? Yeah, the Dwell is Right. Hey, more brake lines coming together. This is a splitter on the rear axle. Da -da -da, out to the uh, the uh, somewhat uh, theoretical end there. Here's enough to do the other side. Here is... Uh, I'm actually a little disappointed at the condition of this because uh, I actually... I may just crawl under there and start from scratch because this doesn't even really I think that's the hump where the diff is so I'd like to get that nice and then uh, it all just gets twisted off here all right that is a take all the brake lines are done and the new rear hose is in and all of that is clean and ready to go Somebody's been under here with the spray cans at some point. Not very thrilled with that, but just for the record, that wasn't me. It's supposed to be 30, and it looks to me a lot more like 36. Anyone? You want to give her a spin? Give her a feel? No, I'll take your word. I'm Wait. not guessing on this one because I was out. You're out? <laughs> give, me, give me a spin here. Well, slow it down. Show everybody. <laughs> The, uh, the old distributor machine is working overtime tonight. This is the unheated part of the garage. Okay. It is fucking cold. My, my, I can't feel my toes anymore. <laughs> it's, uh, Frankers off. is resting in the car in the nice warm upholstery. Hi, Frankers. Okay, you guys. Do this because I'm getting frosty here. This has to go. Frankers, I see you there. Reprogramming. Reprogramming. Check. Okay. Are you guys ready for this? We better get her ready to... Oh, we can't touch it. We're just going to see where she's at. Okay, lots of money on this. Alright, well, what's, what's, what's your number? What's our range? What's huh? our range for this? What's our confirmed... Supposed to be 30. Well, uh, range. Supposed to be 30. I'm going to say so, 50. I'm going right to the top. You're going 50? Yeah, I'm, I'm saying 36. It does seem pretty high. It's not just the dwell. Okay, you ready? Um, Pick a number. Jesus Christ. The dwell is... Dun, 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 dun. Pick a number. You have three, two, oh, one. And I'm turning it on. Three, 38. two, thirty-eight. Okay. And wait, 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 wait. Paul, what are you doing? Hold on, hold on. Go. Oh, there we go. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> it's 28. Okay, so there the points are never closing, so the dwell is zero. Here the points are barely closing, so the dwell is very small, right? Okay. And here the points are staying open, or staying closed, for 30 out of 45 degrees. So there's zero. What's our RPM there? So that's 400. So the advance starts to come on really right away. Here we go. This engine RPM. There we go. So we'll give you 10 degrees centrifugal advance. We're all in advance wise at 3,200 engine RPM. Go, go. What are you doing? <laughs> pan shots, what Man, else? Orson's got to get some more pan shots. Frankers has to come out of the car. No, There's the Franker. I can't work with these people. Come on. Frankers. <laughs> okay. Come on, Frankers. Oh, no. Like you can't handle it. It's going to follow me probably. You can't handle Frankers. Frankers, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> this is cold on the hands. Holy, that's a large piece of... 
That can go back in, the carburetor can go back on, this thing could be running. Do you want a drink? Oh, uh, no. Near there. You want? I got, uh... We've got doobies. <laughs> what? <laughs> the song. I just made up that song. Okay. Comes on now. Yeah. Back, try it again. <laughs> Take two. Take two. Oh, it's the only time I've ever had to do a second take here on oh, Darts and Stripes. Yeah, first one. I only do one take. The first one's always good. Oh yeah, it was our, our, our weekly episode of Shit Work. <laughs> shit Work! Uh, today on Shit Work, scrubbing the brake uh, backing plates. That's just shit work. And the little springs and cleaning all that shitty little stuff. Anyway, uh, unlike the... Uh, Full on glamour of uh, reinstalling the distributor and carburetor, and with our new fuel lines, got the safety approval. Hey, yeah. <laughs> broke the bank on that. Went for right. new fuel. Don't hose. butt your dart in the gas that spilled <laughs> under the car. Whoa, whoa! Put a cone on that. Put a cone. Put a cone on that fuel spill there. Oh, it's all gone now. If means your safety officer. Oh, that's a good company to work for. Yeah. You don't have to worry too much. Hey, okay, when you guys, when you're jumping off the trucks. Just be careful. Yeah, just be careful. Uh, okay, enough looking at my face. So, the rat, oh, all the coolant God. hoses look good. The fuel hoses were, they weren't even cracked, but uh, that shit doesn't last very long anymore. So, who knows? New, new. Chokey, we're just going to clean all of this. Uh, somebody used, looks like Permatex, to glue the carburetor gasket to the intake. So that person gets a minus one from, Rookie maneuver. from, hey, from team fucking darts <laughs> and stripes. <Yeah. laughs> minus one for that guy, eh? Yeah. You're yeah. losing points. If you're, uh, yeah, that's our please unsubscribe yeah. tip of the day. This channel's not for you, sorry. That's right. If you, man, like that is just ruthlessly ironed on there. I'm going to have to scrape That's it off, so we're not going to make people watch that. We're going to join darts and stripes now in, what do they, what do they say? Now in progress? No, no. Yeah, now, already in progress. Already in progress, yeah. Okay, are we doing it? All right. Might as well. Decided to put the distributor in first because it's at the back. This can go any way we want, right? Right. Yeah. What, uh, close. what part of what the fuck is going on am I missing here? Mm, the whole part of it? Yeah, there we go. Okay. That was it. And goes there, right? Yeah. Vacuum there. This guy. Just slides. Oh, look, you can even see the old marks. Bam. So we can get it within shooting distance anyway. Yeah, nothing a timing light won't solve. Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna put her uh, there. Put her right there, fuck, whatever. Just to get the old ball rolling. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna leave it just able to turn if you want to rotate it. <clears throat> okay, good. That goes there. This goes out. Everything in there? See the gutter all kind of. Okay, that needs to get plugged. Carburetor on. Uh, uh, that okay. Brand From new. Stash. Yeah. 
Very fancy. Nice. And this is all clean. Look at that. Pretty straight ahead. Going for chips factor in this car is gonna be mass. Well, I thought today might be fun to uh, start uh, getting our repair panels ready for the driver's side of the 60 Fury. You can see that, uh, you know, there's really not very much left. I mean, there's plenty for a pattern, but none of it's really usable. That's all, if you were to poke any of that, you'd go right through it. So I had to butcher it there to get it apart and it's all kind of just thrown on. My uh, the most challenging part of this is uh, the dog leg area here. I've decided to do it in three pieces just because it's so much easier when you're by yourself to not work with eight foot long pieces when you can just do a little weld there. Uh, that is serving only as a pattern because it is uh, it is uh, too thin to actually use but plenty there to measure from. Uh, interestingly even though the wheel arch uh, the wheel tub is the same piece presumably the same part number uh, the trunk drop is different this drops straight down whereas the Dodge rolled under here somewhere uh, and this has a three-quarter inch uh, body line here and whereas the Dodge has kind of a three-eighths of an inch kind of slightly different detail and you can see that there's actually the Plymouth is substantially flatter down the side and you're left with this so none of this is usable but the wheel tub is So that's great news. Uh, the dog leg has, I think you can see, there's some shitty grandpa work in there that we're going to just cut off anyway. So no loss. And this is hopefully going to provide uh, enough of a pattern and a reference to give us something to sketch up uh, for a pattern here. One of the things with this repair is that the original stainless molding has to drop on there without any gaps or it'll fit or it'll look terrible so we can't just get it close it has to be exact or when you put the trim on it'll look like shit. Ditto back here uh, you could try to hide all that with trim but then it's kind of bullshit. I want it to be decent. The car's got to be good right? So. I thought that might be fun to do today, do some hammering, um, yeah, very good, let's get uh, started with a pattern here. I uh, just hung a little bit of construction paper here, I'm just kind of mocking up what we want to make, very, very, very roughly, just really at this point to see where we have to shrink it and where we have to stretch it, and you can see here, when it won't lay flat, you can just cut some slots in it, and uh, there, when you lay it flat, if there's space, you have to stretch it. And here we see where it uh, changes direction here. The pieces all overlap, so that will shrink in that area. Pretty easy to figure out. So it changes that way, and then as it comes up this way, um, it turns, uh, it's probably no stretching here, and then more stretching where it's a tighter turn here. So uh, that is gonna get us started. First, we'll just uh, beat the the stretching into it before we even worry at all about uh, uh, how we're going to do the actual lines and shapes and whatever. Just laid that on the edge of the door and pressed on it to give me a, a shape that I can cut out, which will give me the radius of the side of the car. This is almost flat this way, but not quite, so there's going to be maybe a less than an eighth of an inch across this entire thing. More like a sixteenth of an inch probably. Just very small, but there is a radius along 
the whole side of the car. It's just very close, very shallow, but it needs something. And this is be folded under. This will likely all get cut off. And uh, this folds under the car, way under there. And then that is the pinch weld seam, and that's the bottom of the panel. So we're going to rough that off, cut out a hunk of steel, and uh, maybe we'll beat on it for a little bit, make a bunch of noise. Uh, then this piece is uh, already roughed out, and then all I'll have left is the somewhat simpler piece that just goes in the middle. Making it all actually go together and fit and look like something is the challenge. It's easy to do this badly, but it's not very easy to do it very well. Uh, and again, um, there are people who do this uh, coach built panel beating for a living and so this isn't really a how-to because those guys will give you the how-to this is just kind of follow along and have some fun and try and fix your cars in the garage by yourself with no money and no tools so let's see if we can do that kind of looking forward to it I like banging on the tin okay it's just a heavy ball peen again not uh, not ideal, not great. Also not ideal, just firewood essentially. Uh, there's a very rough blank uh, cut from there. So I'm going to start by laying that out and uh, I'm just going to mark the area which will be here that needs stretching. We're just going to start by stretching that stretching quite a bit. It'll be a, a lot of stretching actually to make that happen. So uh, that is essentially the worst of it and then we will put all the lines in and such later but there's some stretching and shrinking, a lot of shrinking to do here. And that might be a bit of a challenge as well. Uh, again, I uh, uh, do not claim to be a professional panel beater, just somebody who <laughs> has never bought a decent car, so let's have a go. Okay, all I've done is flipped it over, sketched roughly what I'm trying to do on the back of the thing, and now I'm just literally just beating the shit out of it, trying to stretch this whole area out. If we don't stretch that, this won't lay flat. It also has to curve like that, so this all has to be longer than that uh, for that to work. There's the approximate body line, so I'm really beating it up in here. Really got to get that going. That's the worst of it there. This is going to be interesting because it has to shrink somewhere in here. Anyway, as you can tell, this is actually quite tiring. So I'm going to keep beating on it. Really no point in even trying to make anything look nice until you've stretched the crap out of it. So uh, there's my high-tech unit there. Uh, yeah, I wish there was some magic here that you could do this quickly but uh, with just a whatever this is some kind of hammer just with that and a piece of wood this is the uh, this is not the fastest way to go okay we can see that we are getting closer now with the depth of the, of the uh, relief there uh, but um, put a very strong reverse curve all the way down here so I'm going to just take a, uh, a radius uh, that I have somewhere and the old bushing I'm just going to drive that in there and hope that this uh, crease here will uh, support it and uh, we're going to have some work to do in here because there's a lot of weird shit's going to happen in this area and the rest of it might come pretty good. So we've got the radius this way. We've got our really big stretch here. So we're just getting the rough, rough idea here. And we're just, uh, a lot of this is just hours and hours of fine tuning. So I'm just going to keep at it here. So that's where we are after a couple of hours here. Uh, still, obviously, a long way to go. But uh, a good rough start anyway. Going to keep at it a ton of, uh, you know, a ton of details and really make sure that I've got this uh, 
uh, far enough. The, uh, I think the biggest risk here is not putting enough shape in it because it is requiring quite a hammering to get this to get this shape together. Nevertheless, content uh, really. Uh, it's actually quite cool to have these big moldings here as patterns because uh, it really it gives you a pretty uncompromising uh, pattern to fit to. So uh, it can't help if it fits this. It's got to be very close to what it was originally. Also, making this job possibly a little more difficult than if you could cheat it a little bit here and there. But uh, it's okay. It'll be better in the end. I did the back piece uh, a few days ago. It actually came out very nice. Kind of hard to see, but you know, still room for some fine tuning, but overall a uh, pretty pretty good start on the rest of the quarter panel. Then there's going to be one piece between those two. It will go there. This will be probably the easiest of the three. This one I think is the hardest. The dog leg is a combination of different types of curves and such. Uh, so challenging piece for sure. For me, anyway. It's going to be the pattern for the center piece between the, and the, uh, and the rear one. Just loosely thrown on, so we're going to make this one bigger than we have to, so we can give ourselves a little more option if I like this piece up to here, or I like this piece better all the way there. Yeah, we can we can splice them together. Uh, so that is roughly what we're going to make, and that will go in here. This guy is getting cut off down there somewhere. Not too worried about that. This we may use all that, or we may just use the bottom. So whatever. So right now, the goal is to go and start smashing that out of something. And uh, I think first, I don't know how much of this we're going to, well, I might cut out a piece that big and just trim it off, of course, right? It's easier to handle a bigger piece. Okay, let's do it. These were from Tom. Um, yeah, I don't know how I ever got along without these. What a nice thing. Just, you know, instead of... When you Quiet, sparks. Watch it go. We used to grind, you know. Oh, yeah. Cut stuff like this with a grinder. Yeah. Oh, God. Like, it's just so. His heart is. Oh, God. Hang on. Oh. That's one of the biggest problems with these things. You don't want to, you can see how reinforced that is. Oh, yeah, that's been cut, cut a through times. that. Yeah. And a nice and cut. You used almost no electricity. Okay, so. That's the center line of the flare. This is the flat surface. This is the pinch weld seam. This is my snap on forming. Hang on, we should we should really feature the uh, tools of the trade here. Yeah, that's a real sweetie. Frankers is custom ordered. <laughs> That's, that's it, right? And a uh, piece of pipe and...
<laughs> the trailer ball radius. Ah, yep. uh, High tech. Yeah, well you can see already. <coughs> it all wants to go this way, which is what it would do. So we'll be stretching it in here, in there, and then in here. Uh, and less so. And yeah, but that's pretty much it. I'm just going to keep it. I want to get this guy first. And then we'll probably go in here and stretch this till that runs true, right? Yeah. And then we'll keep folding it up. And uh, we might go in and stretch it just a little bit all the way down. Because it does, the whole thing goes like this a bit. Not much. We stretched it. That would do. So I'm going to keep folding it over. Apologies for the noise. Probably show up. stretcher here uh, quite a bit and maybe a little bit and then we'll do it some more yeah you can see right it should not it shouldn't rock back and forth oops the whole goddamn seat <laughs> Jesus all right I mean <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely got some uh, curve that it shouldn't Should have in there. The other way. Yeah. That means this has to be longer than this. if we pound this over a bit more now. Where's the... Mm. Oh, thank you. The old mallet. stretching all the way up to there I think. So let's do a little more. Um, okay. Shrunk, right? Yeah. Because otherwise, it'll be, uh, it'll be all know. yeah, it'll be crazy. Right? Yeah. So, and then we fold it again, and then it needs to be stretched again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you have to do it in order. So this will have been stretched, shrunk, shrunk and, and stretched, then stretched again. again. So it'll go on. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Weird. Yeah. You can't just do it in one. No. It has to be over. It has to be done in steps. True. Which was weird to me because when yeah. you just stamp it and the yeah, press, there's no chunk. steps, it's just patoon and you're done. But.
Okay, I'm gonna take these uh, next door and just kind of loosely chuck them on the car and uh, see if uh, we have to, you know, how much touching up we gotta do. There's the uh, rear. Top. And, uh, the uh, dog leg bottom. Again, uh, just leaving this very sketchy because I don't want to really commit to any really hard lines at this point. Because I might as well do that right when we know exactly where it's going to go. Kind of sneaking up on it. Huge overlap right now. I may weld these together before they go on the car. Make it a little easier. Or it might make it harder. I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna go chuck them up there with some clamps and, and hope for the best. Okay, well, that's all I've got time right now. Anyway, that's kind of the basic idea. Obviously, a long way to go, but that is all clipped to the uh, original wheel well, so the shape is, is very close already and it'll need. Uh, you know, I'll fine-tune it as we get it close because I don't want to pound all the really sharp body lines into it now and then have to move them. But whatever, just doing this while I'm waiting for uh, waiting for axle seals and uh, uh, you know, brake cylinders, getting the shoes relined. Oh, well there, I think we can see it a little bit there. Uh, yeah, so for just the very first mock-up, pretty content with that. Seems like it is clipping up to the wheel arch very nicely. It's not going to be very far off. So I'm going to leave it at that for now. And uh, can't really weld it on while the car's in this shop, but I thought I could at least get a head start for when I have room for it. Very good. We will see everybody very soon. This is a regular ah, contributor. Same old shit. <laughs>